girls. Okay, hi, happy Friday. Actually, Friday, so exciting. We're already like one for one. So I'm beyond thrilled for this video. I have been preparing for this video the majority, not the majority of the day, but I set it aside a good part of the day yesterday and today to make sure I had the proper information to get you all. So this video is based on my Google form that was about me being a big sister to people that have questions that they might not necessarily want to ask their own siblings or parents or friends. So I have three questions for you and I will lay them out and then give you my legit answer. Okay, so diving right in. First question, what are some good resources for STD testing and just general information? I'm too nervous to ask my friends and family about it, but I wish I knew more. So thank you so much for asking that and feeling comfortable to ask that. Even though this is anonymous, it's still hard to put out there and I appreciate that. So first of all, um, I just wanted to give you a little statistic. The CDC estimates that youth ages 15 to 24 make up just over one quarter of the sexually active population. All right. But they account for half of the 20 million new sexually transmitted infections that occur in the United States each year. Ah, so we want to avoid that. So according to WebMD, a lot of people think that um, after you have any sort of interaction with your partner, you should douche. And if you don't know what that means, that just means like trying to clean inside, if you're a woman, like inside of your vagina or just like inside your body. Um, but that's not a good idea. Um, douching can lead to even more infections and um, because it upsets the natural pH of the bacteria inside that would protect your vagina usually. So just, just leave it. Your vagina can take care of itself. It's like... It's really magical down there. <laughs> um, the best way to take care of your vagina after sex is to literally leave it alone. And like I said, it just cleans itself. Um, a good thing to also keep in mind is that smells are normal. And smells are going to change, especially if you're, like, introducing new things to that area. Um, but nonetheless, just leave it alone. However, peeing after sex is really important. Um, that's important because when you are having sex or any sort of like interaction, um, bacteria can be put or like kind of like, I don't want to use the word shoved, but like can be like pushed into your urethra, which is like where you pee out of. Um, so making sure that you pee after sex is really good. Just to, like flush that out. Um, and if you think about that, then you should probably also be drinking water just to like help you pee a little bit more. Um, what else did I find on WebMD? Um, if you're a woman, when you wipe, make sure you do it from the front and then go to the back. Just once again, transfer of germs and bacteria. You want to like keep things separated. Um, and it said that hot and sweaty places are the perfect spots for bacteria and yeast to thrive. So for that reason, if you are having any encounters with anybody or you're just kind of like feeling not super confident about what's going on down there, I would suggest breathable clothing. Um, it's kind of weird, but I've seen a couple things that are like, once a week, you should sleep without any bottoms. So I'm like, what? But if you don't want to do that, and I get that, that's fine. Um, but cotton is really, really good. I cannot express that enough. Even though sometimes you can find really cute cotton underwear, but even if cuteness is not the number one factor, taking care of yourself is. So like, try cotton. Um, what else? So in terms of STDs, STDs a lot of the time don't, they don't have symptoms. Um, at least that's what WebMD says. <laughs> um, so testing is truly the only way for you to like find out if you have something. But if there are symptoms, they could be discharge, pain, blisters, sores, spots, or even lumps around your genitals. So once again, things to look for. On the bright side, because of the Affordable Care Act, many insurance plans do cover STD testing, and I think a lot of times when people think of, like, testing, there's costs to it. Same thing with, like, using condoms, same things with, I don't know, birth control, any sort of, like, contraception or, like, things that are used to help keep you safe and, like, keep you doing the things you want to be doing with, like, just being safe about it, okay? Um, it comes with a cost. But let's think about our life and like the long term of things, right? Like if you don't get that STD test, that could lead to many more health issues down the line that could cost even more money if we are focusing on cost. However, I'd like us to put like health above cost because I always like preach this, like you're number one, so we need to make sure we take care of ourselves, right? Um, 
So you can probably get STD testing for free or at like a very reduced price because of health insurance. So that's like a really important thing to keep in mind. And this question asked me just general information. What's good about general information? Where should I like go for information? I strongly suggest Planned Parenthood. Um, so my gynecologist is in Illinois, but I'm in Vermont. So like, I don't want to just, I don't know, a little more like personal connections. I've reached out to the current um, Planned Parenthood in Vermont, and they have been super helpful with me just, like, asking questions about, like, how does birth control work? Like, I'm on this other medicine for my acne. Like, is that going to make it not work? Like, I really would like my period to stay regulated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these are questions that are very fair, and sometimes, yeah, we don't feel comfortable asking them, but we need to know them. And it's a lot better to ask and get the answers than to just kind of, like, go to sleep at night, like, shaking with question marks, right? And what else did I find? Um, so you can get tested for STDs at your local doctor's office, a community health clinic or health department, or your local Planned Parenthood health center. So in at the bottom of this, after this video, I'm going to put um, a link for like the Planned Parenthood website all about STD testing. Okay, let's see how far. Oh, six minutes in. Oh my gosh, so sorry. Okay, um, swiftly moving on. Next question, how do you deal with a toxic person, particularly someone you're not friends with anymore, but they just keep trying to start drama and they won't leave you alone? So what I would say about that is that you just need to be open and upfront that you're trying to better yourself and you can't do it with this person in your life. So even if that means letting your friends know, hey, I would appreciate if you don't talk about this person or like if you don't include them or you want to include them, that's fine, but like I'm just not going to be there respectfully, that's totally okay. Sometimes it's really hard to put up those boundaries, but once you do put them up and you can move on, it's incredible. Um, there's this one song called 18 Cool by Hoodie Allen. I strongly recommend it, but it's literally about talking about these people um, in high school that thought they were, like, so cool then. And now that we're, like, actually becoming adults, those people that were not very nice and not really doing super great things, they're not doing the things that I'm doing. And everyone is their own individual person and everyone rates success and happiness differently and that's totally okay. But just in terms of like my goal is to have an overall effect in like positively impact other people's lives. And I know that there are other people that are, like you said, starting drama and they're not doing that. So when I am able to put up those blockades and keep those people out, I'm able to do so much more, right? So make sure we take that into consideration. It's not it's like self I put I would put this in the category of self love, right? Like you're trying to better yourself, like self empowerment, and it's not selfish. So as long as you're respectful about it, so you don't have to like bash that person. Maybe you don't go around saying, "Well, they start drawing." Like I don't want to be associated with them. Just be like, I'm trying to work on myself, and I feel as though I can't with this person's. You could say like I've experienced negativity from them, but you don't necessarily want to say like they're negative because it's like, well, where's your proof for that, right? Just speak from personal experiences because. If you speak with like your I feel statements, no one can knock that. They can't say that's invalid because they're your feelings. They're, they're always valid, right? Okay. <laughs> Next question. What are some good ways to get more viewers on YouTube? I'm going to keep this really short because I don't necessarily aim to have the most views in terms of publicity. I like to get views because to me that means I'm touching more people and hopefully helping out more people. So I would just say be real. I'd say be honest. I'd say don't be afraid of what people are going to say because not everyone's going to be happy with your content. Um, I've never talked about STDs before, <laughs> but here I am, so I don't know how that's going to go. Um, but I want to do this for the people, and I'd say check what you're doing it for. Um, try to be true to yourself and your audience, I guess. But in all of that, I'm going to say that wraps up all of our questions. Perfect. Just shy of 10 minutes. I hope everyone enjoyed this segment, and please share it with people if you find it useful. Um, I will also put the link below for the next Big Sister video and I cannot wait to do another one. Thank you so much to the people that asked questions and I hope that you all have a safe and happy weekend.